celebrities who passed away without us realizing it. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're taking a poignant journey Archers through the lives of celebrities Let's whose passing may have left. flown under the radar. Join us as we honor these extraordinary individuals, diving deep into their lasting contributions to the entertainment industry. From the quietly overlooked to the secretly influential, we'll explore the stories and legacies of those who have left an indelible mark on our culture. Let's get started. Richard Attenborough Richard Attenborough, a towering figure in the British film industry, was born on August 29, 1923, in Cambridge, England. His career began on the stage, but he quickly made a name for himself in film, starting with a compelling lead role in Brighton Rock, 1948. His versatility was further showcased in notable performances in The Great Escape, 1963, and Jurassic Park, 1993. However, it was behind the camera that Attenborough would leave his most indelible mark. Transitioning to directing. In the late 1960s, Attenborough faced initial setbacks with his first few films. Despite these challenges, he remained undeterred, driven by a vision to produce works that could influence society and highlight pressing issues. This vision came to fruition with Gandhi, 1982 a biopic that presented enormous production challenges, including financial difficulties and the daunting task of authentically portraying the life of Mahatma Gandhi. The film's success was monumental, garnering eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director for Attenborough. Attenborough's later directorial works continued to reflect his humanitarian spirit and social consciousness. Cry Freedom, 1987 dealt with the brutality of apartheid, and Chaplin, 1992, delved into the turbulent life of Charlie Chaplin, illustrating the complexities of fame and creativity. While not all his films met with the same level of commercial success, Attenborough's commitment to storytelling with a purpose never wavered. Outside of filmmaking, Attenborough's dedication to humanitarian efforts was evident in his long-standing role as a UNICEF ambassador, where he tirelessly advocated for children's rights and welfare across the globe. His humanitarian work was an extension of his ethical commitments, clearly reflected in his personal and professional life choices. In his personal life, Attenborough faced profound tragedy with the loss of his daughter and granddaughter in the 2004 tsunami an event that deeply affected him. Health issues later in life saw him dealing with the effects of a stroke in 2008, which greatly reduced his mobility and eventually led to him living in a nursing home. Richard Attenborough passed away on August 24, 2014, at the age of 90. His death was attributed to the long-term effects of his stroke, compounded by his advanced age. Richard Attenborough's legacy is not just in the powerful films he made, but also in his impactful work as a humanitarian. His life and career were characterized by an unwavering dedication to using the arts as a vehicle for social change, and he remains a revered figure in both the cinematic and philanthropic communities. Michael Clark Duncan Michael Clark Duncan was an American actor born on December 10, 1957, in Chicago, Illinois, whose memorable career was characterized by a blend of imposing physicality and a remarkably gentle demeanor. Before his rise to fame, Duncan worked as a bodyguard for celebrities, including Will Smith and Jamie Foxx, a job that highlighted his formidable presence, which would later become a significant aspect of his acting career. Duncan's breakout role came in 1999 with the film The Green Mile, where he delivered a powerful performance as John Coffey, a death row inmate with a mysterious gift. This role earned him critical acclaim and an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor, marking him as a notable talent in Hollywood. His portrayal combined a physical intensity with a poignant vulnerability capturing the hearts of audiences and critics alike. Following The Green Mile, Duncan's career spanned various genres. 
He appeared in the blockbuster Armageddon, 1998, as Bear, and played the villain Kingpin in Daredevil, 2003. His versatility was evident as he adeptly shifted from dramatic roles to action-packed performances. Duncan also lent his distinctive, deep voice to several animated films and TV shows, enriching his portfolio with a diverse range of characters. Tragically, Mikhail Clark Duncan passed away on September 3, 2012, at the age of 54, following complications from a heart attack he had suffered in July of that year. His sudden death left a significant void in the entertainment industry. Despite his untimely passing, Duncan's legacy lives on through his impactful performances, which continue to resonate with audiences around the world. His career, though cut short, was marked by a series of roles that showcased his unique ability to blend strength with sensitivity, making him a beloved figure in film and beyond. Gene Stapleton Gene Stapleton born on January 19, 1923, in New York City, was a distinguished American actress revered for her enduring role as Edith Bunker in the seminal television series All in the Family, which aired from 1971 to 1979. Stapleton's portrayal of the lovable, albeit naive, Edith Bunker not only won her widespread acclaim, but also earned her three Primetime Emmy Awards. Her performance brought depth and warmth to a character that became a beloved figure in American television, resonating with audiences for its authenticity and heartfelt humor. Beyond her iconic television role, Stapleton's career showcased her remarkable versatility as an actress, spanning stage and screen. Early in her career, she appeared in films like You're a Big Boy Now, 1966, and later in Michael, 1996, demonstrating her ability to handle a variety of roles across different genres. Her theatrical contributions were equally significant, reflecting her roots in stage acting and her adeptness at both dramatic and comedic roles. Despite her strong association with the character of Edith Bunker, Stapleton successfully navigated a diverse array of roles throughout her career, continually proving her acting prowess. Her talent for transforming into her characters allowed her to avoid being typecast, a testament to her skills and dedication to her craft. Jean Stapleton passed away on May 31, 2013, at the age of 90 at her home in New York City. Her death was attributed to natural causes, specifically complications from natural aging. Stapleton's legacy in the entertainment industry remains profound. Her contributions continue to be celebrated, marking her as a pivotal figure who enriched television and theater with her exceptional talent and distinctive characters. James Avery James Avery, born on November 27, 1945, in Atlantic City, New Jersey, was an accomplished American actor cherished for his iconic portrayal of Uncle Phil Banks in the beloved TV sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which aired from 1990 to 1996. Avery's performance as the stern yet endearing family patriarch resonated deeply with audiences, creating a character that was both authoritative and profoundly relatable. This role not only defined his career, but also left an indelible mark on popular culture. Avery's acting talents extended far beyond his memorable role in The Fresh Prince. His career encompassed a diverse array of performances across film, television, and voice acting. One of his notable contributions to voice acting was as the character Shredder in the animated series Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. His distinctive commanding voice brought a dynamic presence to the villainous character, showcasing his versatility and ability to adapt to different mediums of entertainment. Throughout his career, Avery appeared in a variety of roles that highlighted his range as an actor, from comedic parts in sitcoms to more serious roles in dramatic film and television productions. His robust on-screen persona was complemented by his genuine warmth and depth, characteristics that endeared him to both his peers and his audience. Tragically, James Avery passed away on December 31, 2013, at the age of 68, 
following complications from open-heart surgery. His death was a significant loss to the entertainment industry and his fans around the world. However, Avery's legacy continues to thrive through the enduring impact of his performances. He remains a beloved figure whose contributions to television and film have left a lasting impression on the hearts of audiences worldwide. Harold Ramis Harold Ramis was a seminal figure in American comedy, born on November 21, 1944, in Chicago, Illinois. He was not only a talented actor, but also an acclaimed writer and director, whose work left a significant imprint on the comedy landscape. Ramis first gained widespread recognition for his role as Dr. Egon Spengler in Ghostbusters 1984, a blockbuster film he also co-wrote, showcasing his knack for blending intelligent humor with mainstream appeal. Beyond acting, Ramis's directorial prowess was evident in his work on films such as Caddyshack 1980 and Groundhog Day 1993. These films, widely celebrated for their humor and originality, have become enduring classics in American cinema. Groundhog Day, in particular, not only enjoyed commercial success, but also sparked philosophical discussions, highlighting Ramis's ability to infuse his projects with depth and thought-provoking content. Throughout his career, Ramis's contributions extended beyond the roles he played on screen or the films he directed. He was a creative force behind the scenes, often writing and collaborating on scripts that would go on to define a new era of comedy. His work was characterized by a unique wit and an understanding of the human condition, which he conveyed through his sharp, insightful comedic style. Harold Ramis passed away on February 24, 2014, at the age of 69, due to complications from autoimmune inflammatory vasculitis, a rare disease that affects the blood vessels. His death marked a significant loss to the entertainment industry, but his influence on comedy and filmmaking endures. Ramis's legacy continues to resonate, inspiring new generations of comedians and filmmakers with his innovative approach to comedy and his enduring works that remain beloved by audiences around the world. Gregory Hines Gregory Hines was an exceptionally talented American tap dancer, actor, and choreographer born on February 14, 1946, in New York City. Known for his masterful tap dancing skills, Hines emerged as a prominent figure in the performing arts world, captivating audiences with his dynamic rhythm and precise footwork. Hines's prowess in tap dancing earned him widespread acclaim, culminating in a Tony Award for his performance in the Broadway musical Jelly's Last Jam in 1992. This performance was celebrated not only for its technical excellence, but also for its emotive power, showcasing Hines's ability to convey deep emotions through dance. His illustrious career spanned various artistic realms, including film and television, where he utilized his dance skills to great effect. In movies like White Nights, 1985, and Tap, 1989, Hines demonstrated his versatility, blending acting with dance to tell compelling stories. His acting career also featured notable roles in films such as The Cotton Club, 1984, and Running Scared, 1986, where he delivered performances that further established him as a multifaceted entertainer. Unfortunately, Gregory Hines's life was cut short when he passed away on August 9, 2003, at the age of 57, due to liver cancer. Despite his untimely death, Hines's legacy endures through his significant contributions to the art of tap dancing and his lasting impact on the entertainment world. He remains a revered figure in the dance community and an inspiration to performers and choreographers who continue to be influenced by his innovative style and passion for the arts. Leonard Nimoy Leonard Nimoy was a multifaceted American artist born on March 26, 1931 in Boston, Massachusetts, who left an indelible mark on the world as an actor, director, author, and musician. He is best known for his iconic portrayal of Spock, 
the logical and enigmatic Vulcan in the Star Trek franchise. Nimoy's performance was profound, and his signature Vulcan salute, accompanied by the catchphrase, Live long and prosper, became cultural touchstones, resonating deeply with audiences and becoming synonymous with the character's ethos of peace and reason. Nimoy's influence extended far beyond his role in Star Trek. His career encompassed a diverse array of roles in film, television, and theater, showcasing his versatility as an artist. Not confined to acting, Nimoy also made his mark as a director, helming successful films such as Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, 1986, which is often celebrated for its environmental message, and the comedy hit Three Men and a Baby, 1987. Beyond his cinematic and theatrical endeavors, Nimoy was also a published author and recorded musician, contributing to the arts with his poetry and music albums, which reflected his introspective and thoughtful nature. His artistic output was a blend of intellect and emotion, characteristics that he effortlessly wove into his professional work. Tragically, Leonard Nimoy passed away on February 27, 2015, at the age of 83, due to complications from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Despite his passing, Nimoy's legacy endures through his substantial contributions to the arts and his influential role in science fiction history. He remains a beloved figure in the science fiction community and an inspiring example of how one can use their platform to explore and address complex themes of human experience and scientific inquiry. Bill Paxton Bill Paxton was a celebrated American actor and filmmaker, born on May 17, 1955, in Fort Worth, Texas. He became widely recognized for his dynamic roles in blockbuster films such as Aliens, 1986, Twister, 1996, and Titanic, 1997. Paxton's ability to seamlessly transition between genres, from action to drama to science fiction, highlighted his versatility as an actor and made him a favorite among audiences and filmmakers alike. Over the span of four decades, Paxton's career included not only acting, but also directing, showcasing his talents behind the camera. One of his notable directorial efforts was the film Frailty, 2001, where he demonstrated a keen ability to create suspenseful and psychologically complex narratives. His work as a director was marked by a distinctive style that resonated with both critics and viewers, further establishing him as a multifaceted, creative force in the industry. Paxton was celebrated for his ability to bring depth and authenticity to a wide range of characters, making each role memorable through his skilled and nuanced performances. His portrayal of every character was met with a sincerity that made his films more engaging and impactful. Sadly, Bill Paxton passed away on February 25, 2017, at the age of 61 following complications from heart surgery. His untimely death marked a significant loss to the entertainment industry. Paxton left behind a legacy of memorable performances and significant contributions to cinema, both as an actor and a director. His work continues to be celebrated and enjoyed, embodying the spirit of a truly gifted artist whose impact on the film industry remains profound and enduring. John Mahoney John Mahoney was a distinguished English-American actor, born on June 20, 1940, in Blackpool, Lancashire, England. He is best known for his beloved role as Martin Crane, the lovable father in the TV sitcom Frasier, which aired from 1993 to 2004. Mahoney's portrayal of the down-to-earth and witty retired police officer won him critical acclaim and two Primetime Emmy Award nominations, endearing him to a broad audience. Beyond his role in Frasier, Mahoney's career was rich and varied, extending to both stage and film. He showcased his versatile acting skills in a number of significant projects, including the romantic comedy Moonstruck, 1987, and the coming-of-age film Say Anything, 1989. 
His performances were consistently praised for their depth and authenticity, displaying his ability to bring complexity and charm to every character he played. Additionally, Mahoney made substantial contributions to the Chicago theater scene, where he was a respected member of the Steppenwolf Theater Company. His work in theater was marked by numerous celebrated performances, significantly impacting the theatrical community in Chicago and earning him a cherished place among stage aficionados. John Mahoney passed away on February 4, 2018, at the age of 77, in Chicago, Illinois. The cause of his death was reported as complications from throat cancer. Mahoney's legacy endures through his memorable performances on both the small and big screens and his lasting impact on the world of theater. His career is remembered as one of significant artistic achievement, marked by a unique ability to touch the hearts of his audience across various mediums. Glenn Headley Glenna Headley was a talented American actress born on March 13, 1955, in New London, Connecticut. She made a significant impact on film, television, and theater with her versatile and compelling performances. Headley's breakout role in the film Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, 1988, showcased her exceptional comedic talent, where she starred alongside Steve Martin and Michael Caine. This performance not only highlighted her comedic timing, but also her ability to hold her own with established stars, setting the stage for a flourishing career. Throughout her career, Headley delivered a series of notable performances in films such as Mr. Holland's Opus, 1995, where she played a supportive wife and mother in a touching story about the life of a dedicated music teacher and Dick Tracy, 1990, where she brought to life the character of Tess Trueheart. Her roles earned her both critical acclaim and audience admiration for her depth and versatility. In addition to her on-screen achievements, Headley also had a successful stage career. She received a Theatre World Award for her Broadway debut in Extremities, 1982, a play that further demonstrated her range and skill as an actress. Her stage work was marked by the same intensity and integrity that she brought to her film and television roles. Tragically, Glenn Headley passed away on June 8, 2017, at the age of 62 in Santa Monica, California. The cause of her death was reported as complications from a pulmonary embolism. Despite her untimely death, Headley's legacy endures through her impactful contributions to the world of entertainment. Her body of work continues to be celebrated for its quality and the profound impact she had on audiences and colleagues alike, leaving a lasting mark on the arts. Nelson Ellis Nelson Ellis was a gifted American actor, born on November 30, 1977, in Harvey, Illinois. He emerged as a dynamic talent in the entertainment industry, renowned for his magnetic and compelling portrayals on both the small and big screens. Ellis's ascent to fame was catalyzed by his standout performance in the HBO series True Blood, where from 2008 to 2014, he played Lafayette Reynolds, a flamboyant and outspoken short-order cook. This role not only showcased his exceptional acting skills, but also highlighted his ability to infuse his characters with complexity and humanity, earning him critical acclaim and a passionate fan base. Ellis's portrayal of Lafayette broke new ground in television for its unapologetic representation of a queer black character, making him a beloved figure among viewers and a model of diversity in media. His performance was characterized by a unique blend of boldness and vulnerability, bringing depth to a character that resonated with many for its authenticity and relatability. Beyond his iconic role in True Blood, Ellis demonstrated his versatile acting prowess in a variety of other projects. In The Soloist, 2009, he played a supporting role that brought attention to the plight of homelessness and mental illness, while his participation in The Help, 2011, offered him a platform to contribute to a narrative centered around civil rights and social justice. Each role he undertook 
was performed with a dedication that spoke to his deep commitment to his craft and his desire to impact viewers profoundly. In addition to his film and television roles, Ellis was also known for his stage work, having graduated from the prestigious Juilliard School, where he honed his skills and developed a foundation that would support his acting career. His stage performances were marked by the same intensity and charisma that he brought to his screen roles, establishing him as a well-rounded actor capable of crossing the boundaries of medium and genre. Tragically, the entertainment world lost this vibrant artist too soon when Nelson Ellis passed away on July 8, 2017, at the age of 39 due to complications from heart failure. His death was a significant loss to the industry and his audience, leaving behind a legacy of transformative performances that continue to inspire and entertain. Nelson Ellis's contribution to the arts remains a testament to his talent, passion, and the indelible impression he left on every role he embraced. Powers Booth Powers Booth was an esteemed American actor, born on June 1, 1948, in Snyder, Texas. Known for his commanding presence and distinctive voice, Booth carved out a niche for himself in the entertainment industry with his intense performances, often portraying villains or authoritative figures that captivated audiences. Booth's acting career took off after his compelling portrayal of the cult leader Jim Jones in the TV movie Guyana Tragedy, The Story of Jim Jones, 1980. This role not only demonstrated his ability to embody complex characters, but also earned him an Emmy Award, setting the stage for a series of powerful performances throughout his career. Over the years, Boothie's versatility allowed him to navigate between film, television, and theater seamlessly. He showcased his range in a variety of genres, but remained particularly effective in roles that leveraged his stern demeanor and deep resonant voice. In the film Tombstone, 1993, Bootha played the notorious cowboy villain Curly Bill Brosius, a role that became one of his most memorable. His performance added a layer of charismatic menace to the film, which has since become a classic in the Western genre. Boothie also left a significant mark with his role in Sin City, 2005, where he played the corrupt senator Roark. This role highlighted his ability to portray villainous characters with a flair that was both chilling and engrossing. Beyond these darker roles, Booth appeared in a variety of other projects that showcased his dynamic capabilities as an actor, including television series and stage productions, each earning him respect and admiration within the industry. Powers Booth passed away on May 14, 2017, at the age of 68 in Los Angeles, California. The cause of his death was reported as complications from pancreatic cancer. Despite his passing, Booth's legacy continues through his memorable performances and significant contributions to American cinema. His career remains a testament to his talent and his enduring impact on the diverse landscape of entertainment, where his portrayals of complex, often imposing characters left an indelible mark on audiences and colleagues alike. Robert Forster Robert Forster was a respected American actor born on July 13, 1941, in Rochester, New York. With a career spanning over five decades, Forster became renowned for his compelling performances in both film and television. His acting journey was marked by a blend of critical acclaim and popular success, establishing him as a versatile and dedicated artist. Forster's career received a significant boost from his Academy Award-nominated role in Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown, 1997, where he played bail bondsman Max Cherry. This role revitalized his career, showcasing his ability to bring subtlety and depth to his characters, earning him widespread recognition and respect within the industry. His filmography includes a wide array of memorable roles that highlighted his adaptability and skill. In Medium Cool, 1969, 
Forster's portrayal of a television cameraman caught in the tumult of the 1968 Chicago riots was critically acclaimed for its raw and authentic approach to social commentary. Later roles, such as his enigmatic turn in David Lynch's Mulholland Drive, 2001, and as a stoic patriarch in The Descendants, 2011, further demonstrated his broad range and ability to deeply connect with audiences. Beyond film, Forster's television work also reflected his strong work ethic and adaptability, appearing in a variety of series that benefited from his robust performances. He continued working consistently up until his death, with roles that spanned genres and showcased his enduring talent. Sadly, Robert Forster passed away on October 11, 2019, at the age of 78 in Los Angeles, California. The cause of his death was reported as brain cancer. Despite his passing, Forster's legacy endures through his impactful contributions to cinema. He leaves behind a body of work that continues to be celebrated by audiences and fellow professionals alike, reflecting a career filled with rich, nuanced performances that have left an indelible mark on the film and television industries. Michael Nykvist Michael Nykvist was a highly regarded Swedish actor, born on November 8, 1960, in Stockholm, Sweden. He was best known internationally for his compelling role as Mikael Blomqvist in the Swedish film adaptations of Stieg Larsson's Millennium series, including The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, 2009, and its sequels. Nykvist's portrayal of the determined journalist won him international acclaim, showcasing his ability to capture complex emotions and his magnetic screen presence. Nykvist's career, however, extended far beyond the borders of Sweden. He made significant inroads into Hollywood, appearing in notable films such as Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, 2011, where he played the antagonist, and John Wick, 2014, portraying a memorable villain opposite Keanu Reeves. These roles highlighted his versatility and charisma, making him a beloved figure in the international film community. Known for his depth and ability to portray a range of characters, Nykvist brought a unique intensity to each of his roles, whether in dramatic thrillers or action-packed blockbusters. His talent for storytelling through his performances made him a pivotal figure in both Swedish and international cinema. Tragically, Michael Nykvist passed away on June 27, 2017, at the age of 56, following a battle with lung cancer. His death marked the loss of a talented actor and storyteller remembered fondly for his contributions to cinema. Nykvist's legacy continues to influence and inspire as audiences worldwide celebrate the significant mark he left on the film industry through his diverse and impactful body of work. Max Wright Max Wright was an American actor born on August 2, 1943, in Detroit, Michigan, whose career spanned various genres, including stage, television, and film. He gained widespread recognition and popularity for his role as Willie Tanner, the father in the popular TV sitcom Alf, which aired from 1986 to 1990. Wright's portrayal of the exasperated but endearing Willie Tanner brought life to a beloved character endearing him to a generation of viewers with his humorous and often heartfelt performances. Before his role in ALF, Wright had already established a solid career in the theater. He earned acclaim for his work on the Broadway stage, showcasing his versatility and depth as an actor in various productions. His performance in the film Norma Ray, 1979, further highlighted his ability to take on diverse roles and contribute meaningfully to both stage and screen projects. Max Wright's career was not just limited to his most famous television role. He appeared in numerous other TV shows and films, each time bringing his unique talent and dedication to the roles he embodied. Despite the challenges often associated with being typecast, Especially after a significant sitcom role, Wright continued to work steadily, demonstrating his commitment to his craft. 
Tragically, Max Wright passed away on June 26, 2019, at the age of 75, in Hermosa Beach, California. The cause of his death was reported as cancer. Despite his passing, Wright's legacy endures through his contributions to the entertainment industry. He leaves behind a memorable character in Willie Tanner that continues to be fondly remembered by fans of ALF and new audiences discovering the show today. Thank you for watching the entire video on the Famous People channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth content. We appreciate your engagement and look forward to sharing more intriguing stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.